What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April. So, yes, of course, it is Wednesday. And, of course, it is Real Talk. So, I hope you guys like the color because I've been messing with the freaking saturation and settings on the camera. Thanks to my girl, Miss Shay Love, here on YouTube, who has been sending me videos. So, that way, I can improve the quality of my videos. So, yes, we have been working on that. So anyway, this hair that I'm rocking is actually old. It's like over a year old. Um, I can't really remember where it's from. I mean, I do know where it's from, but I can't really get the name off my tongue. But yes, it's the Peruvian Straight 22 inches. I wore this baby for a long time. And so I took it back out because I just finished doing a lookbook. Um, so yeah, and it seems like, like I did this lookbook over. This is the second time because certain hair goes with certain clothes clothing and so the stray hair seemed to go really well with it but let me tell you something it is fucking hot outside it was like 116 degrees so i was like sweating to death ready to die okay if i didn't have to come on video i wouldn't even have the shirt on right now because i was so hot so yes this hair is like major old i did get a new chair i purchased this for my birthday that just passed oh excuse me back here um, because the chair that I did have, which was like the wooden chair, was so uncomfortable. Like, I woke up one day and my back was like killing me. Oh my God, as well as my ass. Okay, so I purchased this from Office Max and it's really nice. It's white leather. You can go up and go down and it's so soft and I absolutely love it. It swivels, does all that cool stuff. So I got that. I purchased it for myself for my birthday. And of course you guys know my birthday was Sunday, which was Father's Day, which was absolutely amazing. Like, oh my God. So like I told you guys, I had to pick up my daughter by 1130. And um, so her and Tiki came over and they came when I went to get them. They had this huge bouquet of balloons and gifts for me. And Tiki was like extra excited to see me, which is my grandson. And I was so happy she gave me a gift. So she knows she's older. She's in her 20s. She's 20. So she gave me this for my birthday. She bought me a bong. Yes, guys, a bong. And I absolutely love this thing. Like, I freaking love this. Okay. Yes. Like, this is everything right here. It's so pretty. And, of course, I did get some of this for my birthday, in case you guys don't know what that is. That's medical grade marijuana. So, I did get that for my birthday. Um, my daughter made me a drink when I came home from the spa. So, I had, like, this surprise um, gift that I didn't know about. Um, first, my son came in with some flowers and balloons also. I had a cake. And then my daughter was like, all right, you got to leave. And I was like, um... I gotta leave. Where am I going? And she was like, well, who's gonna take you? So, I was like, well, how far we gotta go? It's only gonna take seven minutes to get there. And she was, I was like, so who car he's driving? Because, I mean, I have two cars. I have a Tahoe and I have a Malibu. Um, and it, a limited edition of Malibu. And, um, I gave my son the Tahoe because the compressor is messed up in it. Like, so it doesn't have air conditioning. And it's too fucking hot out here for me. So he drives that, and I was like, well, I'm not getting in his truck if we got to drive too far. So he drove me in my car, and, like, I didn't even know where he was taking me. Me and him are a week apart in birthdays, so we're Geminis. And so we're driving, and I'm sitting in the passenger side, and I'm like, whoa, chill out at the stop sign, and you're making them sharp turns. But anyway, I was like, so where we going? He was like, I don't know. I was like, well, you don't know. So he was like, you'll see when you get there. And I'm like sitting there like, I thought we was cool. We was friends. I thought we was friends. You know, we the same sign. We don't do this to each other. But anyway, I ended up going to the Kalua Spa, and I got my feet done, which is so pretty. Oh, my God. I so needed it. Oh, man, I'm, like, so excited. I was so excited about it. And I got a massage. Like, it was amazing. I had, like, the best birthday. And when I came home, she had, like, this fruity drink made for me, which was made with mango vodka. And all, I'm just going to post a picture. But so my daughter's studying to be a bartender. So the drink was amazing. She made me dinner. I had lemon chicken breast and shrimp um, linguine. Oh, my God. It was so amazing. Like, I had, like, the best birthday ever. And, yeah, so 42 was a great day. And at the end of the night, you know, I used my gifts. And I absolutely love this 
bomb, like for real. Oh, and you guys know I keep it real, so if in case you didn't know, yes, I do smoke, okay? Loving it. So, and it's so heavy, and man, you don't really need much with this. You just be done after like two hits, but whatever. So, yes, other than that, um, I really haven't been up to much of anything, just making wigs, you know, that kind of stuff. So, anyway, also, for you guys who want to purchase hair or makeup or clothing wholesale, I will have a video up tomorrow for you guys, which gives you a list that you can download, which is not like those cheesy vendors. This is actually like really grade A vendors who only sell or who only vendor to certain companies like L'Oreal, Revlon, NYX, um, Nasty Gals, um, H&M, and certain vendors that have been in business for 30 years. So it's not Ally Express vendors. But I will post that video up on Thursday. So if you want to start your own business, then on clothing, hair, and makeup, then I will have a video for that. Or if you just want to buy it for yourself, you can do that as well. I mean, I love buying makeup for myself and clothes and hair so yeah but anyway so let's get into this real talk if you want a real talk video about yourself meaning you are a life situation you could always send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com please make sure to put in the subject line real talk and if you want to change the names of your characters in the video please make sure to tell me that prior in advance you know what I should have got done too, though? I should have got my fingernails done while I was at the spa. But it's so hard for me to get my nails done because it's really, really hard for me to sew a wig with my nails being um, with fake nails. But I should have just got them done, like painted. Well, I could do that myself, but yeah. And I hate when makeup gets, like, in the nail bed. Oh, my God. That just, like, really drives me crazy. Because then your nails look all dirty and stuff, like... And, of course, I am drinking today. This is um, mango Bacardi and mango juice and cherry grenadine in one of these glasses. Mm -hmm. So, let's get on to this video because I'm, like, all over the place today, I think, right? So I'm really going to try to do four. I know I'm going to have to switch out memory cards because, you know. Hi, I need your advice on something. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years and everything has been amazing. We constantly talk about the future together and how happy we are with each other. He's my best friend and I'm his. We've gotten in little fights before. He has trust issues from previous relationships and I know that. He has always told me if I ever lied to him, he would be done with me. Since being with him, I've not once ever wanted anyone else. He constantly thinks that I'm doing things behind his back, but I'm not. He constantly argues about that. Yesterday on the way to dinner, I accidentally told him a very small white lie, and he caught me in it. It was very stupid. I shouldn't have lied, but it was over something very dumb. Nothing serious. Anyways, well, shit, why she didn't tell me what it was? Anyways, he flipped out and called me a liar, saying that he's done with me, we're over. After I dropped him off, he blocked my number, unfollowed me on Twitter, hasn't answered anything I've sent him. I tried contacting him on every form of social media, and he won't even read my messages. I don't understand. I get it. Lying is a big deal to him, and he's upset. But why in a two-year relationship over a small white lie that had nothing to do with him or our relationship. I don't get it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I care about him so much and I miss him so much. He's moving across the country on Tuesday. We were planning to stay together long distance until I move out there with him. Now this is happening and I'm crushed. I feel like I can't let him leave without seeing him. I feel like I need to say goodbye to him before he leaves or else I'm going to be heartbroken. What do I do to get him to see me? So she wrote this to me four days ago. We just gonna call her Mary. So first of all, they've been together for two years. He don't like liars. Who do like liars? Like for real or some real shit? Who fucking likes liars? Yeah, I love liars. Those are my best fucking friends. However, 
she told some little white lie, which I don't really know what it's about, but she said it wasn't to do with him. It had nothing to do with their relationship. So basically, it had nothing to jeopardize them. So he caught her in the white lie, and he basically blocked her on everything, won't return her calls, won't return her messages, deleted her, just basically just deleted her. And they've been together for two years, but he's constantly accusing her of doing shit behind his back. And she's not. You know what this sounds like to me? It seems like he's found his excuse to break up with her. You know what I'm saying? Because he already had somebody else. And I have seen this done plain as day. But to myself, uh, on several occasions with my ex-husband, who accused me of cheating on him when I was not. And accused me. Come to find out, it was his black ass. Then with the last one that I was dating, um, my ex, he did the same thing to me. He was always constantly saying that I was cheating on him. When I would take my daughter home, I was messing with somebody. He he knows I don't want him. He was, I'm cheating. Just a bunch of bullshit when I was not. And lo and behold, it was him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just caught you on your tablet fucking some next bitch. But all this time... You've been saying it was me and how I'm doing shit and I'm playing mind games with you and head games when it's been you playing the head games all along. And if you guys are wondering, wait a minute, you caught him on his tablet. Well, after I had him arrested, I did catch his tablet. I went in his tablet and I seen him fucking the next bitch, okay? And this was not an old video, okay? It was something new because I could tell by his fat ass because he was fat in the video. So, yes. Now, okay. So, anyway, I had to text somebody back. Um, yes, I have been speaking with someone who is very interesting. And um, I'll tell you guys all about that later on because, you know, we have to do our investigations and we got to check them out. So, like I said, he was very interesting. Okay, and that's all that I can say. But anyway, so it seems like um, Mary's boyfriend is on a defense about something or really, really, like, <sighs> obsessed with liars. When, to me, it seems like he's the liar. Now, here's the thing. If you've been in a relationship with somebody for two years, of course it is going to come a lie. It could be a little white lie. It could be a little black lie. I don't give a fuck what the color is of it, but it's a lie. A lie is a lie. However... How big of a lie it is all depends. If it has nothing to do with the relationship, meaning nobody got cheated on, nobody got, you know, hurt or anything, it has nothing to do with the other person, then, okay, it's a little white lie. You caught me in it. Okay, let's move past this. However, when you are disconnecting yourself to one person that you've been with for two years and you've shared many things in common with each other and just shared many things with each other and then you just diss them just like that over something so minor then there is something else playing on in the background to this guy that Mary is not aware of. When you are constantly accusing somebody of cheating on you and you have no facts, you have no proof, and the person is with you all the time, that is your guilt. And they say this all the time, when you constantly do this and you're constantly accusing me it's really your guilt and that's so pathetic when a man or anybody could do that to another person constantly accuse them of doing something when they know damn well that they're not but it's them that's doing the dirt and the bullshit you know what i'm saying like on some realness like why would you do that to the person if you fucking around and doing some fuck up shit some dumb shit to anybody don't go trying to take your guilt and throw it on me. Just be fucking guilty and do your dirt and try to live with yourself. But don't try to throw it on me to make me feel like a bad person. Or better yet, to get me to fucking leave off your trail. Not to bother you to, to hide your trail of guilt and suspicion. So honestly, Mary, I think that he has some other shit planned in the background that you were unaware of. Because two years is not a long time, but it is a long time for a relationship when you get to know somebody. And if they could just dish you just like that over a small minor lie, then listen, then there's more to it than you and I both know. Now, of course, you did not tell me what the lie was, but it wasn't anything to do with your boyfriend or your ex-boyfriend, and it had anything, nothing to do with your relationship. So, therefore, 
how are you going to get to see him again? And how are you going to get to say goodbye? Let me tell you something. First of all, April, don't sweat no man. Okay? I don't sweat nobody, male or female, unless they my kids. Okay? If you don't want to be bothered with me as much as I may care about you and love you, but if you don't want to be bothered with me, then deuces. I'm not about to stress myself out and come out of my character and my pride to get you to be on my side. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't want to fuck with me, and you don't want to be bothered with me, and if you feel like you could cut me off just that easy, then you know what? It was not meant to be. And I'm not about to stress you over it. Yeah, of course I'm going to be hurt because two years is a part of getting to know someone, and you've gotten to know them. However, two years ain't a life fucking time, and you really don't get to know the person. There are a lot of skeletons in people's closets that they hide that your ass don't know about, and they don't want you to know about, nor do you even want to know about, okay? And it seems like he's got some in his that if he can cut you off just that easy and get rid of you because of something so minute, then he has something in the works. And maybe this was just his way of easing out of the relationship because he knows he's about to move cross country and he wants to sow his wild oath and get to know other females. Now, if that was the case, then be man enough and say that shit. However, I am not about to troll up behind no motherfucking man or nobody and beg you for forgiveness and try to get you to talk to me. I'm not about to do that. If you don't want to fuck with me, then I guess you just don't want to fuck with me. Life is too short. I am not about to let one fucking person make me miserable. Yes, we hurt and eventually we get over it. How do you think I felt when I got married and then got divorced and all the shit that I went through? My last relationship, I did not feel that way. I was ready for the nigga to be long gone goodbye. Adios, deuces, bitch. Bye, Felicia. All that shit, puff, be gone, okay? However, we all do get hurt. And, of course, love hurts, okay? And we want to find Mr. Right. However, if Mr. Right could dish your ass and poof, bye, Felicia, and be gone that quick over something I knew, then, bitch, he has something already in the works, and you ain't the only motherfucker. And maybe the next bitch on the sideline was the one that he really wanted to have a long-distance relationship with and move on to the next day. So I'm just saying, in my opinion... I don't really think that you should be woo 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 and trying to get him to talk to you. If he wants to be a stubborn ass, then let him be a stubborn ass because I guarantee you that he already did some dirt that your ass just don't know about. If he's constantly accusing you of something and constantly, constantly saying you're doing this and doing that and then he done did this, then he already has something in the works or he's already has something playing in the background that your ass just don't know about and this is his way of making you feel guilty so that he doesn't feel too bad about the shit that he's done to you. So how do you get him back? Bitch, please. Let me tell you something. I'm all for everyone finding love and being in a relationship and being happy. However, if it's that easy for you to diss me after two motherfucking long years, then bitch be gone. Poof. Bye, Felicia. I don't need you in your li my life because I feel like that, if that's if it's so easy to diss me, then you never really fucking cared like that from the get-go. Okay? So, stop worrying about him, sweetheart, because eventually... If it was meant to be, he'll come back to you. However, I'm just saying, there are some people who love to string you along and love to keep to string you along and get you to apologize and to get you to woo-woo-woo them. That is their agenda. And I'm going to be honest and tell you that I was one of those. With my ex-husband, he know he did some dirt and he did some dumb stuff with him, his drinking and crashing the cars and just doing shit to piss me off and upset me. And he would apologize, but you know what? I would drag it out for days and days and days. Should have dragged it out forever and just left him alone. But I have been forgave him, but I love to, I love to torture him with me making him feel guilty in the things that he did, which was only right because you had no business doing the dumb shit. But some people do like to drag things out and make you feel guilty in the things that you've done because it makes them feel better inside. And also it allows them to see if you really care and how far you will go. But then again, it's some people that do that and they just do it for the fun of it. And as long as you continue to woo-woo and cry and beg and plead, they're not going to take you as serious. They're going to continuously play games and drag it out. So the best medicine for this motherfucker, let him be and leave him alone. Because as long as you continue to cry to him and woo-woo-woo him, he is going to continue to drag it out. But 
if you leave his ass the fuck alone and don't chase behind him and just act like, okay, it is whatever, he's going to sit there and be like, damn, Mary ain't call me. She ain't text me. She ain't say nothing. Like, what's going on? Let me reach out to her because I really don't want to lose her, but I was playing these head games. So a lot of times this be some head game bullshit. Me personally, or if it were me, I wouldn't be running after him. Yeah, you fucked up by telling a white lie. Okay, we all do it. Who has not done it? However, if it didn't jeopardize your relationship with him or him or you, then there's something more in the background that you just don't know behind the scenes that he has got plans on doing. He's got his own little agenda. And I wouldn't keep crying over him. Because for what, sweetheart? Maybe he wasn't the one for you. Two years may not seem long to a lot of people like myself who was married to somebody for like, say, 17 years. But two years is nothing. That's just you just getting to know the person. But to you, of course, that's a long time. However, two years is really not that long to get to know someone. Because like I said, they got shit in their closet that your ass just don't know about. On surrealness. So let Mary know your thoughts on this, okay? Mm hmm Okay, my love. So this one was sent to me in May, May 25th. Hey, hon, I just wanted to start this off by saying how much I love you. I have changed my name to Sonya. I have been friends with Ashley for 10 years. Everything up until the last year with me and her have been perfect, and she was my best friend. However, things have started to slip. I'm not an ugly person by any standards, inside or out. But being around Ashley, or every time I'm around her, brings me down. I'm not unattractive, and neither is Ashley, but I guess the guys just go for her. We used to go out and everything would be fine, but when other people got involved, etc., men things would turn left. For example, men things would turn left. I have been through a lot, and she knows that. Men would approach her and ignore me. One, one time, a guy came to our table, completely ignored me, didn't even look at me in the face, and offered her a drink. And she entertains this every time. I told her not to, but she doesn't listen. I told her how this made me feel, and she said she understood. I told her that a guy should approach both of us, and if he likes her, that's fine. But if he's being disrespectful, why even entertain him? Fast forward a few months, and we went on a trip to Atlanta. Things got ten times worse, and it just kept happening and happening. And being around her brings my self-esteem down. She is a great person and a good friend, but it hurts me. I know she has been through a lot, too. So sometimes I feel she's over she overcompensates. But after she came back from Atlanta, she went 10 times worse. Ashley would be on Snapchat and literally captioning each snap. Look at me. I look so good. I'm so sexy right now. And just doing the most in general. We went back to Atlanta a few weeks ago. And this time, it was really bad. I'm not much of a dancer. I'll dance when I have a few drinks in me. I know her personality. And it's just her. But she does the most. We, we could talk, we could walk into Sephora and one song would play and she would go into full song and dance mode. Sometimes it's like she just doesn't, she does it for attention. I like to be low key, but I think she's, she sees it as boring. Another friend has told me that she is selfish and secretly th thrives off when I tell her I, how I feel when guys ignore me for her. She is very superficial also and also thinks things like makeup and hair define someone. We went, to, we went to clubs, and for once, there was a guy who spoke to me over her. She said she was my wingman. But what wingman takes her friend, stands on the table, and goes buck wild grinding when no one else on the table is doing anything? Again, taking the attention away, which caused the guy I was talking to to look as well. She met up with the guy she knew, but became such a different person. I came with her one night and let her have her time. And I just sat aside and had a drink. She was grinding like crazy, running her fingers through her hair and trying to get all the attention. I don't know if this is petty, but there's so much more to say. She just makes me feel down about myself. Even when I did feel good, she would find one way to take the attention away. I have a fear that if I tell her how I feel, it will just boost her ego and she will think I'm jealous. Which I am not. As I said, I'm not unattractive and I have a good brain on my shoulders. Something which she doesn't. It just keeps happening every time we go out. On a person, on a person's soul, no matter how much confidence you have, 
that will eventually tire you out. I've even lost guy friends who I thought were cool who stopped paying me any mind as soon as they met her. I'm tired of her doing the most. I mean, she's not Latina, but her world revolves around her thinking there's something more appealing about being one rather than being herself. She even changed her surname on Facebook to Rodriguez. It's been a few days and I haven't spoken to her, even on the flight home, and that whole day I couldn't talk to her. I really love and respect her, but I am a low-key person, and I feel like she has gone ten times crazier into feeling herself and making others around her feel like shit. She does the most. I want to talk to her, but I don't know how. I've tried many times, and she just thinks that I want everything my way, but I feel like being around her is detrimental to how I'm feeling. I'm going through a lot right now, and I don't know what's right to do. Please help. Woo! So, Sonya's friend, Ashley, that she been with for years, is, like, doing the most. Like, seriously doing the most. Okay, first of all, it's cool to have a friend that you've been with, friends with, for, like, long term. However, don't do the most out in public. And this is just how I feel. Like, I cannot stand bitches who think that it's all about them, always flossing and flaunting and thinking it's about them. Bitch, go sit the fuck down somewhere because it ain't all about you. So here's the thing, my dear, um, Sonya, with your friend Ashley. So, yeah, a lot of guys gravitate to her, and I've had that happen to me in public many times as well. But you know what it is? That person is the one that's always doing the most. And me, I'm low-key. I don't really bother with people too much when we go to clubs. I'm the one that sits on the sideline. I don't really do the most because I really like all that attention and that's just not the person I am. I'm like like I said, I'm a very low-key person. If you was to meet me out in public, I've had many people that met me out in public, like seen me. Oh my God, oh my God, Smuffin is my lover. Sometimes I'd be like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. You're not Muffin is my lover. You look just like her. And then I got to be like, yeah, I'm her. Because I'm overwhelmed and I just kind of like to be on the low. I don't really like a lot of tension. Now, here's the thing. People that do the most and want all the attention, people gravitate to them for many different reasons. And if it's the guys gravitating to her and she's grinding and she's doing all that extra and doing too much, why else do you think that they fucking gravitate to her, Sonya? Because they looking at her as she's fucking easy. She's trap bait. She's fucking easy, okay? And then they looking at you like, well, I know I ain't gonna get her up in the bedroom, or I know I ain't gonna get, I ain't gonna get a chance with her because she's a certain way. You can always look at a person by their ways and actions and tell what type of person they are. Whether it be she's doing the most, she's a thotty, she's a hoe, she's a whore, or she's a conservative person. You know what I'm saying? You can always tell that by the way they dress sometimes, and just by just shit that they do in general. So don't never think that okay. You're less than a person that she is or she's better than you because all these guys are gravitating to her. You ever stop and think why they're gravitating to her and what she's doing to grasp that attention? You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck gets up on tables and grinds and shit when nobody else is doing it? Doing the most. First of all, bitch, you ain't about to embarrass me out in public. If you want to do all that shit, take your ass to the table over there, bitch, and jump up on it, lay up on it, hump it. I don't give a fuck what you do to it. But don't do that shit in front of me, like embarrassing me. Now, yeah, we all feel like we pretty, and there are a lot of ugly motherfuckers out there, meaning ugly from the inside. I don't really care what your outsides look like, but they can have the nastiest attitude on the inside and be drop-dead gorgeous on the outside. Bitch, if you got that type of attitude and you really think you all of that, then you know what? You ugly as a motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? But, like I said, there's a lot of ugly bitches out there from their attitudes inside who can be really cute on the outside and just be doing the most with their personalities. Those are them bitches that I really don't like. And I, and I see that a lot. You know, I get the side eye. Me, I'm the type of person, I don't need to have on no hair or no makeup to go outside. Unlike your friend who feels defined by wearing hair and makeup. Bitch, if you feel that way, then you must feel like you ugly on the outside. If you have to go somewhere and be dressed and presentable as in hair and makeup all the time, then you have low self-esteem. 
I have met many people outside in public out here in Arizona where I've had my little turban on and no makeup, okay? And people have seen me like that many a times. I've gone to the grocery store like that. I have gone to the grocery store in my sweatpants and what have and my turban and no makeup and have ran into people. Do you think I really care? Because at the end of the day, this shit is coming off and I'm a human being. However, if you think that you're so cute and you're better than everybody and you gotta do all of this and shit like that, then you doing the most. And I have seen many a bitches like that. And you know what's so funny about it? The females that do that shit to me, because a lot of people, a lot of females think that I'm like in their age group, like I'm 20, bitches, I'm 42. But I have seen it many times done to me. And a lot of times I try to ignore it because for one, I'm old enough to be your mother. For two, bitch, you really don't want to get me started. And for three, bitch, you really don't want to get me started because once I do, there ain't gonna be no stopping until I'm done and I'm ready to stop. But I have seen a lot of females like that, like your friend Ashley, who be doing the most, especially when there's a guy around or whatever, just side-eyeing the shit out of me, okay? And I've seen that happen at the clubs plenty of times when I've went, you know what I'm saying, or in public, like, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes you just gotta ignore it, but then there are times when a person like me, because I don't have really no tolerance for a lot of shit, when I have to address it, and there have been times at the club when I have addressed it, and in times in person, like, bitch, don't nobody want your motherfucking man, or better yet, what the fuck is you looking at? You know what I'm saying? I have to be on it like that, and that's not, that is my personality, because I have no filter, but... The type of person I am, I really don't like to bring that out because, for one, I'm too old for that shit. For two, I got five kids. For three, I am two people's grandmothers. And for four, I'm too old for that shit. And for five, bitch, don't let me go the fuck up off of you because if I do, there's going to be a price to motherfucking pay. I'm too old. And if I'm too old to be going through this shit with your fucking 20-year-old some ass, I'm about to treat you like one of my motherfucking kids up in this bitch, okay? So, I see bitches like that all the time. They be doing the most. And that shit can be very irritating. But if it makes you feel like your self-esteem is being brought down or it's detrimental and you can't fuck with her no more, sometimes you don't even need to say nothing. Because no matter what you say, until you can say that shit until you blew in the fucking face, it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like... You can say this shit until you are blue in the fucking face, Sonya. And it doesn't really matter to her because at the end of the day, she's 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 self. She's all about self. If you gonna capture every fucking moment on Snapchat and Instagram of your fucking life, then bitch, you need to get one. Like, I can't stand when people do that. Like, okay, on my birthday, I captured a lot of things on... Um, Instagram. I didn't even put on Snapchat on Instagram because I will post one picture or maybe two a day, but mainly it's only one picture a day on Instagram because I really don't feel like y'all need to see me that motherfucking much. One picture is enough. I cannot stand what some bitches be posting like 20 pictures on Instagram and then you keep scrolling. Every other picture is them. Bitch, you just took that picture. You just got a different lip poke or a different pose. Get the fuck out of here. That's them bitches that just be about themselves. If you got to capture every fucking moment on Instagram or any type of social media, then you really need to find a motherfucking hobby in life. And if you have a friend that's so into herself and think that she's the bitch and shit like that, bitch, please. Sometimes you got to put them bitches in a place. Let them know. Listen, let me tell you something. You do the most. It ain't all about you. Sometimes you gotta tell a bitch, like, we can't always sugarcoat shit for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, like, with me, a lot of people I don't deal with anymore because the type of person I am, if I say something to you, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it because I really don't have the tolerance for the sugarcoat and shit. Just let's get to the straight point. But for a person like her, you need to let her know, listen, Ashley, you just be doing the most, bitch, okay? And it's starting to make me feel real uncomfortable just hanging around you. You ain't got to tell her that your self-confidence level is down, 
don't tell her none of that shit because for what? That's not that bitch business. But you need to let her know you be doing the most. You all it is, you out in public for the attention. And if she can't relate to that and she can't respect that, then that's the type of bitch that you just gotta let the fuck go. There are bitches that I fuck with and there are bitches that I don't fuck with. And I got one bitch that I fuck with up here in um, Arizona. And that's it. Like I don't fuck with bitches at all because for one, they too catty, they do the most. And I'm not gonna be in competition with your ass. You know what I'm saying? If you want that motherfucking Negro, then go ahead and have him. And if he want to gravitate to you, bitch, then go ahead. Like, I don't give a fuck. Because at the end of that day, bitch, I'm still going to be me and I'm going to still be who the fuck I am. But if you want to grind on tables and make a scene every time, then maybe you need to find yourself another friend. However, Ash, um, Sonya, Ashley does that because you're not in competition with her. If you were to be the one person that did the same shit she would do, she wouldn't like it because then the attention would be brought onto the both of you. And she wants most of the attention. So with that type of female, I really wouldn't want to fucking be friends with her like that. Because at nine times out of ten, you probably the topic of her talk, okay? She's probably wherever she's at, whenever she's not around you, talking about you. Yeah, I was with such and such. And please, them niggas wasn't checking for her. They always be checking for me because you know me. I am a cute bitch, okay? Look at me. Mm, I'm sexy. I wish I would see a bitch picture on fucking Instagram or Facebook talking about I look good. Them bitches be having me tripping like you look good and so does the bottom of my motherfucking feet. Okay? Bitch, please go sit your ass down somewhere. Go sit down. So, Sonya, with her, I really wouldn't fucking cater to her too much. With those type of females, yeah, it's cool. Y'all been friends for 10 years, so fucking what? But I'm not gonna be with somebody and hang around somebody that makes a um, a spectacle of themselves. Not only that, but you ain't about to fucking embarrass me out public and make me feel lower than myself. Now, I'm not saying hang with ugly bitches neither, okay? Or bitches that just don't know how to dress or hair that's jacked up. Like, me personally, I don't really care. Let me stop. As I was about to say, I don't really care if your hair is jacked up because you ain't about to come in public with me with your hair jacked up. As I throw a wig on your motherfucking ass. However, I'm not superficial like that. If you ain't got no makeup on today or whatever, that's you. That's you. That's your business, boo. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't go outside to please everybody. Whatever I do on me is to please myself and make myself happy. I don't give a fuck about a nigga, a man, or whatever. If you don't like the way the fuck I looked, then oh, well, bye, bitch, bye. You know what I'm saying? With her, I wouldn't even fucking um, tell her how I felt anymore. How it made me feel, rather. I would not tell her how it made me feel. But I would let that bitch know, listen, you do the most. And that shit is embarrassing. You need to chill the fuck out. You grinding up on tables all the time. You ever think about how people look at you? Tell her some shit for her own good. Don't tell her some shit about your own feelings. Because bitches don't give a fuck about that. They fucking eat off of that. That is their motherfucking energy. But let them know what the fuck they doing about themselves. And they are a different person. And that's just how I would handle her. However, I wouldn't let that bitch advertise no fucking grind emotions out in public around me no more and stop fucking embarrassing you as well as that. And if she want to be on top of the table and she want to go home with the next nigga, let her. Because at the end of the day, you got the book smarts and this bitch is dumb as a doorknob or a nail and she fucking grinding up on the table. At the end of the day, who's looking stupid? I mean, really, who the fuck is really looking stupid? So, yes, let Sonya know how you feel about that situation. I'm sorry, that's why I don't have too many female friends, because bitches be catty. I don't really have too many friends in general, because motherfuckers you can't trust, but bitches... They be all about self, like, they be on some shit, like, oh, I'm gonna get what I can, be posting up dumb shit on fucking social media, saying shit behind the woodworks and shit, like... Bitch, please. Hey, April, I love your channel and absolutely love your Real Talk Wednesdays. I'm having a problem and I hope you can get back to me real soon with some advice. Names have been changed. My name is Lily and I just started working at this school being a lead teacher. Now, in the beginning two months ago, everything was great. I did my work and kept to myself because I'm not a very social person when it comes to work-related situations. I have this assistant teacher, um... Ty that has been working in this classroom for about a year. As soon as I started, we clicked very well. I'm more of the quiet girl and she's more of the loud and aggressive girl at my job. Now, here's the problem. She has told me on numerous occasions that she doesn't fuck with anyone at her job and she stays to herself in her room. 
However, I see her every day talking to people she claims she doesn't like or care about. For example, there is the girl that is filled with drama. There is this girl that is filled with drama at my job. And she constantly comes in my room and tells Ty that she has to talk to her about something later. Ty tells me, girl, I don't care about these bitches at this job or they drama. But then she goes to the girl's room to hear it anyways. Hmm. Sounds suspicious, right? I thought the same thing. Plus, I'm more of the observing type of person. So I sit back and watch what's going on. And I have seen a lot of fakeness going on. Even though Ty tells me all the time she's, the, she's honest and real. Another incident happened at our job's dinner party. I didn't want to go, but Ty insisted that we go so we can stunt on these bitches. And she said it was free food. I'm okay with free food, but I don't want to pretend like I'm cool with these females outside of work when I barely talk to them during work. We go to the dinner party, and I felt extremely awkward, and Ty was there talking to some people. After the party, she tells me about all the pictures the girls were taking and putting it on Facebook. I don't give a fuck about these females' business, Facebook pictures, or their lives in general. And I tell Ty that. She always agrees, but continues to talk about these females 24-7. Ty has been the only person I've talked to at this job, but it seems like she's full of high school drama, just like the rest of them. To make matters worse, she's 27 with two kids, and I'm 25. I would think she would be more mature than that, but she seems she's like she's all talk. She's told me about times when she was going off the job. She was going off at the job and about to fight a 19-year-old girl because she said something about her hair. Really? So now I'm thinking I made a mistake letting Ty in my life. She has told me that she has no friends, and now I'm starting to see why. It's hard to stay distances from her because she works in the same classroom as me. But every weekend she wants me to hang out with her, and now I'm starting to second-guess being her friend outside of work. April, what do you think I should do? I'm usually the kind of person to cut someone off without any care. But since I see her every day, I have to keep working with her. I don't have a problem with her. It's just constantly full of drama and pettiness. And I'm too old and mature to worry about that shit. Thanks. April, I love you. First of all, y'all work at a school, okay? Now we're going to call you Sheila. Um, Oh, you, you named yourself Lily. Okay. Lily, y'all work at a school. You got Ty. Okay, so she was about to fight a girl who's 19 that said something about her hair. She's 27 years old. Was So it seems like y'all work in a high school. If I'm wrong, if I'm incorrect, please let me know. But either way, y'all are the teachers. First of all, I didn't know there was that much drama in fucking school. Like, I send my kids to school to learn not to have some fucking drama, bitches. Like, I know we all have a life outside of work. But, oh, my God. Do you bring that shit to work? This enough bullshit with these kids in school that you got to bring all this extra drama. First of all, like you, Lily, I don't like all that extra drama and bullshit with bitches. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying about females when I don't fuck with them. I like to keep to myself. I don't bother with females because they be so fucking catty and want some dumb shit. The same way she talk about those people at work, bitch, is the same way she talk about your ass. And if you don't start, if you don't start, if you stop speaking to her and don't want to hang out with her, she's going to talk about you. But you know what? That's neither here nor there. These are the type of people who just love to have drama no matter what, what the situation is. You know, like those people that like to keep up with the Joneses. Always like to be trending like everybody else and have the same shit that everybody else has. She's the type of person who is not happy unless there's drama. And a bitch like me, I'm not up for all that drama. Listen, I'm going to fight your ass if we got to fight. But I'm not going to want to have to go do all that and get onto all of that if I could just fucking avoid it. You know what I'm saying? Well, there is a time and place for everything. And this is work. This is work, okay? Where we are at is work work related i don't give a fuck what you are talking about if it's not work related then why are we discussing it at work if you got drama if you got drama with another teacher or you know this and that bitch tell me outside of work because we are at work and if you are working with there's high school students these are the young, most impressionable people in the world, and they love to stir up some drama. However, this is a work environment. Let me tell you this. For one, I don't fuck with people at my job. I never fuck with people at a job. Yes, I will buy you Girl Scout cookies and the candy and whatever the fuck your kid is selling. But outside of work, bitch, no, we're not hanging out. We're not friends, and you're not coming over to my motherfucking house. Because after five, I don't really want to see your ass no more. I don't want to fuck with you.
You know what I'm saying? Now, when bitches have too much drama going on, even if they ain't working with you and they got too much drama going on, those are the type of females that I really don't like to be involved with because I don't need the extra drama. I'm not going to be caught up in some of your dumb shit. And then here it is. I'm getting fucked up or jumped because of your dumb shit. And she's the type of female that just has a lot going on. I'm guaranteeing you if you go outside in public with her or hang out to like a club or whatever, this bitch is going to be the one who thinks she's flawless and always is talking about everybody else and their man or whatever the fuck is going on. Keeping up with the Joneses, okay, but on the drama level. Now, here's the thing. So what you work with the bitch? That don't mean you got to socialize with her. If y'all are not working, what you need to do is steer yourself away from her and leave her the fuck alone. On your lunch break, go sit in your motherfucking car or go somewhere else and have your lunch. But don't entertain her. If she has something to talk to you about, oh, girl, listen to the drama. Listen, I'm working right now. I really don't feel like talking about that, all right? I'm really not up. Sometimes you got to tell a bitch like that. And if it hurts their feelings, oh, well, do you really think I give a fuck about feelings so much that, listen, I'm here for work, a paycheck, bitch. I don't really give a fuck about the drama that you cause or got going on because whatever the fuck you got going on is not about to involve me because I'm not going to lose my job and my money on the strength of your ass. So sometimes you got to tell females that talk too motherfucking much and always want to run their mouth and cause some drama, listen, I don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? You have to put your foot down. And that was my problem a lot of times. Now I have no problem telling your motherfucking monkey ass or bitch ass. I'm not trying to hear that shit. I'm not being involved in it. And if you don't like me, then you know what? Do you really give a fuck? Do y'all really give a fuck? Do y'all really think that I give a fuck about who likes me or not? You know what I'm saying? If I have to tell you, bitch, I don't like what you just said to me, and then you feel some type of way, I don't give a fuck because I don't like what you said to me. Like my friend, my my friend Nicole, we are real tight, and I met her since I moved up here, so we are like this. She don't have no other friends but me, and I don't have no other friends but her. But the thing that makes us like this is when she says some fuck shit to me, I will let her low. Look, bitch, I don't like what you just said. And I tell her in a heartbeat. And she says to me, well, if you don't like what I'm saying, just let me know after I say what I got to say because I know you will. And I said, listen, do you want me to tell it to you like it is or whatever about what the fuck you're doing? Well, I know you're going to tell me. And that's how it is. And that's what makes our relationship as friends more stronger. Because, listen, if you say some shit that I don't fucking like or try to get me involved in some shit that I don't like, I'm about to tell you. And if you don't like me telling you that shit, then you know what? That means you really don't give a fuck about me. And at the end of the day, why would I even want to fuck with you anyway? So what? Y'all work together. Y'all in the same classroom. Y'all just work together. Bitch, you ain't going home to fuck her. You ain't sleeping with the bitch. You think that you should really give a fuck about how she feels about you? So what? She ain't got no friends. There's a reason why this bitch ain't got no motherfucking friends. Because she always stirring up drama. Those are the bitches that you need to steer clear of. A lot of f females feed off a of drama and they absolutely love it okay that's cool when you young and dandy but it, sometimes it's not cool because that brings a whole lot of extra shit into your life that you really don't need and especially at the workplace i always tell people you go there for a paycheck not to make friends i'm not we not we not being friends i'm not going in to make friends you know what i'm saying i didn't go there to make friends with anybody outside of work we are not friends and also on top of that you are in a professional environment where you are around a bunch of other kids, teenagers, and she's talking about she's going to fight somebody that's 19 years old because they said something about him. But on some real shit, um, uh, sorry about that. On some real shit, females at work or any friendships at work are best left at work. We don't need to hang out. Conversations should be limited. Conversations should be about work. Stop giving all your information and shit to your friends and intriguing them with their drama and bullshit. Leave it the fuck alone. Next time she comes to you with some bullshit and drama, let that bitch know, listen, I really don't want to get involved, okay, or I'm not really in the mood. And if a bitch get an attitude, so fucking what? You ain't want to be a friend no how, you know what I'm saying? For real. Okay, so this is going to be the last one. So, hey, April, I wanted to say first off that I love your Real Talk videos and your personality. My name is Ashley, and you can call me Ashley. I emailed before about this Real Talk to this 
so this is just an add-on to that but not sure it made it to you or i am quite a bit away down the line from others here we go i have been married for 17 years and have three boys the relationship with my husband let's call him john oh i hate that name four years ago um I have been married to my husband with for four years. I thought I, I thought it was good, but I guess it wasn't for him. Because he cheated on me with someone that I knew. No friend, just like an acquaintance. I really just knew her aunt when I was younger. Anyways, this was back in, I want to say, around July 4th. For, um, July, four years ago. And it only lasted about one month or so. I knew nothing about this until my husband fessed up and told me about it. Until my husband fessed up and told me about it. He told me he was sorry and he wanted to work it out with me because he really had no idea what he was thinking. We did stay together that whole time and we have been doing really good until this girl moves back from where she was living, which was from Mississippi, and we are here in Texas. I do somewhat talk to her half-sister from time to time if I see her out in places. So that's kind of how I get my info. I was driving back home one day and looked to see if my kids were at a friend's house that lived behind our house. And I noticed the girl that my husband was cheating on outside next door to the house my kids usually go and play at. Come to find out, she lives right behind our house. She supposedly has a man, but to me, April, it seems not to make a difference to her. I feel as though she is just going to cause problems and I am not wanting to play her games. My husband assures me that he loves me and that he is where he is aware of where she lives, but that I shouldn't worry about it. That is just a coincidence and nothing more. Should I worry about it? Thanks for taking the time out of your day to give me your opinion, April. I really appreciate it. So. Ah, uh, let's see. Ashley's husband that she's been with for some years cheated on her with an acquaintance, not a friend, but just an acquaintance that she knew of. So the girl moved from Mississippi to Texas, and the bitch lived behind their house. Excuse me, the drink. But she, she think that the girl's gonna start some. Sh she think the girl's gonna start some shit, and that the girl's supposed to have a man and that Ashley's husband basically say don't worry about it I know she lives there it's just a coincidence I love you first of all let me tell you something she ain't want to play the girls game let me tell you something I don't give a fuck if you got a man or not bitch if you already cheated on cheated with my husband and you knew about me and now you fucking live behind me let's just put it like this I'm gonna knock on your motherfucking door and let you know well yes listen my name is April and I am very aware of what went on with you and my husband. So I would highly suggest and recommend to you that there not be any type of trouble around these parts. Because I would really not want to come out of the character. Okay? And you have a nice day. And make sure you stay away from my husband and my family. I'm just saying. Bitches, this whole video should be about bitches are sneaky and trifling because females are trifling. Now, like you said, she was an acquaintance and I'm pretty sure she knew about your acquaintance ass, okay? That's how females are. Now, if you start seeing her doing some old trifling shit, then you best put her up in her place, okay? Don't worry about your husband fessing the fuck up. You best put her in her place because for one... It's one thing that you fucking with my husband, and that was years ago, and you knew about me. But now, bitch, you living behind me? What a coinky dink. Out of all the motherfucking places in Texas to move to, bitch, you ended up right behind me, behind my motherfucking back door. Seems like there's a problem and an issue at hand. But I'm going to address it before there is any, or if you even get any kind of second thoughts on that matter. To let you know, this is where the fuck I stand at. And bitch, if you even think about it, or even try anything... I am going to put you so far in your place that you ain't even going to know where the fuck your ass is at. Okay? And that's just what I'm saying. Because females are sneaky and trifling. And no, I wouldn't have anything to worry about. Because let me tell you something. For one, if the bitch start fucking with your husband again, your husband had a part to do with this. And he was 
part of this. Now, he don't know what he was thinking of the last time when he cheated on you. Sweetheart, please, I don't really know what okey-doke shit that you can feed into, but let me tell you something. Don't sit here and tell me and try to feed me some bullshit about you don't know what the fuck he was thinking about. Nigga, we know what the fuck he was thinking about, getting in somebody else's drawers and fucking him and cheating on me and being real motherfucking sneaky behind my goddamn back. You really wasn't thinking, because had you been really thinking, your ass wouldn't have did no dumb shit like that, because a bitch will cut your motherfucking throat in a heartbeat and your testicles off and feed them to that bitch, okay? But, yeah, you wasn't thinking. So, we're going to just let that slide for this motherfucking time and let your ass get over. And not really get over because you were on watch. But if you even sniff too hard behind the house or near that backyard, nigga, you will not have your nostrils or the fucking two feet that you came walking up in here on. And that bitch around the corner and behind our house, she will have the holy God fucking fear in her, okay? And a good, well dish served to her fucking ass. Cold or hot, however the fuck you want to serve her. So don't let bitches fucking just rain on your parade. But don't always think that it's a bitch's fault. Because a nigga, they do play a fucking big part in industry. But when a bitch know that you are in the picture and they still want to fucking creep with your man, that means that they are sneaky, trifling, thought whole bitches. And those are the type that you have to put in your place or their place for the year. And let them know what type of time it is. Time frame you on. Because as long as you sit the fuck back and don't say nothing, them bitches will be real sneaky and try to troll up all on your stomping grounds. And a bitch like me will let you know, listen, sweetheart, boo-boo, we not even going to go there this time around because you already know what time it is. Now, if you sniff too hard or you even barbecue that chicken wing or that fucking hamburger too hard or in my motherfucking backyard or on the other side of my fence, and if I smell your fucking smoke flames come over my fence, it's going to be a motherfucking problem. So I wouldn't have nothing to worry about. What y'all bitches think? Okay? Mm. So on that note, put her in a place and make sure that she knows her place is. And make sure them fucking barbecue flames don't come over your fence. Because the first time they do, let a bitch know. Bitch, don't even try it here. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed Real Talk today. And I am going to take this wig off and relax because it is hot and I finally cooled down. And I will see you guys on the next video. And if you have any Real Talks that you need, make sure you send me an email to MuffinIsMyLovers2012. And on that note, stay diva and divalicious. And I'll see you girls and guys soon.